Welcome. My name is Martin Riley from University of Munich, and I'm happy to share with you the highlights presented just uh, the other day uh, in Lugano at the International Conference of Malignant Lymphoma, the 17th edition. Uh, now, Lugano is special in, in that way that um, there's a storyline behind this conference. And, and so you get really the highlights of uh, uh, the reason Congress is first uh, of all presented data and put that into perspective. And here I would like to start really with my uh, what I would probably call uh, the fur, uh, you know, my personal four highlights. The big theme of this year was definitely Hodgkin. And in fact, we have two studies which potentially establish a new standard. And for me, these are the two new standards from right now away. And what are these studies? So the first one is, is a study being performed by SWOC and other uh, cooperative study groups simple question, straightforward uh, message. So what our uh, American colleagues uh, did, um, interestingly, together with our pediatric colleagues, they compared two first-line treatments in Hodgkin, essentially brantuximab AVD versus nivolumab AVD. This is a large study of almost 1,000 patients, quite impressive. And the readout is very simple. Um, first of all, NAVD is better tolerated. Secondly, it's more efficient with a benefit in progression-free survival of about 8% after one year. Now, one has to admit uh, um, these are early days, so we probably uh, have to wait uh, for a longer follow-up, but so far, these are really uh, the best results in, in these kind of patients, uh, which I am aware of. And uh, I think this is now the best of its class for patients, um, let's say older patients, uh, you may know even at age 60, it, it will be challenging to, to perform standard AVVD. Now, at the same meeting, uh, as a late breaker, the German study group presented uh, a study HD21. And this again is a large study with um, 1,500 patients. And the idea of this one was as well to improve the standard of care. So just to remind you for the high risk patients, so these are younger patients, advanced stages, um, the German standard of care is an intensified uh, um, chemotherapy regimen, the escalated um, vehicle. Now, while this uh, regimen showed the best results on long term, it also is hampered by the highest toxicity. And therefore, the German colleagues try to reduce uh, uh, gonadal toxicity, hematotoxicity, and others by uh, rearranging the schedule, adding up brantuximab, and that's a so-called breakout uh, regimen. Now, uh, it's also important to, fear, uh, to say that the majority of uh, patients will have to receive only four cycles of, of uh, this regimen because there is a pet-guided decision after two cycles. Now, what about the results? First of all, toxicity uh, is much better. These data have been already presented at last ASH specifically hematotoxicity, um, but also gonadal toxicity measured by hormone levels has been significantly improved. Secondly, outcome has been also improved. And now here we're talking about a longer follow-up. So we're talking about three years progression-free survival. And here we are in the range of 94.9, so almost 95%. This is really impressive, fair to say, and of course we need more data also comparing, for example, an AVD in the subsets of patients, elderly, younger, and so on and so forth. But for the time being, um, this is for me the new standard in high-risk Hodgkin. So in our clinical routine based on these data, we already switched from BACOP to the better tolerated, but even more effective um, breakout. What about um, aggressive lymphoma? And there are a lot of, of data. And really the point is what I would like to make is um, that 
um, immunotherapy now is becoming standard of care, full stop. And that's based, uh, first of all, in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the long-term outreach of the ZUMA-7 trial. ZUMA-7 trial uh, study with uh, 359 patients compared uh, um, CAR T cell treatment versus autologous transplants. So on purpose, this is a study for, let's say, the young fit patients. Uh, and inclusion criteria was either primary refractory to an art shop regimen or early relapse within 12 months. We have already seen the PFS data before, so no surprise there. The significant benefit of CAR T cells remains with a hazard ratio of 0.5, so essentially reducing uh, the risk of relapse by only half. The important message is um, overall survival. And uh, this is important because in the control arm, and that was predefined, uh, the patients and the option uh, to cross over and receive um, CAR T cells in third line. And in fact, that was the case in the majority of the patients relapsing in, in the control arm, uh, 57%. And still, long-term outcome, which means overall survival was superior in, experimental, uh, in the experimental arm. What does that mean? Well, it does mean uh, that CAR T cells in second line are better than CAR T cells in third line. And finally, following this theme, uh, what about CAR T cells, uh, what about, uh, sorry, bispecific antibodies? Uh, and the huge advantage of bispecific antibodies is uh, that they're um, easier to, uh, to apply because it's off the shelf. A treatment and some of these compounds are meanwhile already registered by FDA, two of them, and in aggressive lymphoma. And therefore, it's interesting to look what which direction the field is moving. And at Lugano, there was also one study now moving, in fact, even to first line. So combining ARCHOP plus minus a bispecific antibody, in this case, epcoritamab. And what I can share with you, first of all, this was feasible. Toxicity was uh, uh, as expected and easy to manage. And at least uh, the response rates in a very high risk patient population, double hit uh, patients, high IPI patients, and so on and so forth, um, is very promising with an overall response rate of 100%. So there is little room for improvement. Uh, but um, what's more important, also CR rates above 80%. Follow-up is limited, so we're talking only about a limited follow-up of a couple of months, but at least what we can see so far, these results uh, are quite interesting. It may well be that immunotherapy will challenge uh, the 45-year-old standard of CHOP, finally in first line of treatment of diffuse large C, um, cell lymphoma. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope these hints uh, um, will give you some orientation what's going on. If you need more information, I encourage you to look up the ICML webpage. A lot of this info is there. You can download it once you're um, registered and you will get all uh, the details about these, what I would call the jewels of uh, lymphoma treatment in 2023.